Hi, my name is BB, and I'll be sharing some recommended readings for people who are interested in homeschooling, in home educating, in not paying for college, but still wanting some educational factors to help them learn more on the subjects of K to 12 teaching. I don't have a college degree. I'm not an expert. I did a year and a half of college, community college, about a decade ago. I'm 30. I don't look it because I don't wear makeup. I don't do my hair. I don't dress up. This is just me talking out of my ass. I watch a lot of teaching videos on YouTube, a lot of homeschool channels, a lot of homeschool vlogging families, a lot of lesson plan channels, a lot of lesson plan videos. Practically, a lot of school district educational teaching reference videos. If I type in the right keywords on YouTube, School Districts California, School Districts Nebraska, School Districts Seattle. I, I go by the, the, the school district and then a, a major city in every state. And I add so many videos of classroom instruction, classroom instruction, teaching, lesson videos, charter schools, Catholic schools, public schools, Montessori schools. I'm not really into the Waldorf thing. I find that kind of wacky. Um, I go through a lot of videos just watching and learning and observing the teaching in a classroom and how many different styles there are and how different teachers, different people, provide the lessons and ideas in different mediums, in different styles, in different tones of voice, in different ways. With the lights on, with the lights off, with the projectors, dry erase boards, smart boards, blackboards, on paper, learn by doing, learn by reading, learn by listening, learn by visual, learn by watching a video and then demonstrating and doing that same thing you did, saw in the video with a partner, etc, etc. So, I have a few books I want to share that I recommend as recommended reading on the side. Here we go, camera. So, I'm going to go this way. So, I have, I recommend a recipe book of some sort for recommended reading if you are homeschooling, if you're teaching in a classroom, if you're educating yourself as an adult. Why not try a little bit of every genre? Glasses on. So, I have a mac and cheese cookbook. I actually have read through it skimmed through it, but I haven't actually made any mac and cheese. My husband bought me this online. We saw it at the Tillamook Museum and Factory in Oregon, but he bought it from me on Amazon. And then we have classic, the McGuffey Six Eclectic Greeter. This is challenging, very challenging. Now I know that you're supposed to kind of see how tight this is. I bought it on Amazon. No, I didn't. I bought this at a bookstore called Comstock in um, Auburn, Washington. There's a used bookstore that is a gold mine of a couple million books in a small storefront. called Comstock Books. I don't know if it's going to be open after the uh, national mass hysteria is over and so many mom-and-pop shops are going to go out of business. 
I hope they're still in business. Now this has an old book smell, but it's relatively new. It's You can buy these on Amazon retail without going through any third-party sellers. So just buy them on Amazon. They're relatively inexpensive if you buy them as singles. But if you buy a box set, it can cost, well, I think close to $100 for a box set. So this is the 6 reader, and I'd say definitely beyond an 8th grade level. The McGuffey's, when they were published in the 1850s, they weren't really necessarily at a specific grade level, but they just got more difficult and more challenging with each level. So there's a primer, which is basically a phonics reader, and I'd say that's kindergarten, maybe first grade, and then there's a level 1. A 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, and a 7. And when you are in the second reader, when you're halfway through the second reader, you have a bonus book called The Speller. And it's just a, a McGuffey version of a spelling book with spelling rules and practice and rote memorization and recitation, etc., etc. And you do that until you finish it, which should be around the beginning of the third eclectic reader. So another book I have, I've skimmed through this, Home Education by Charlotte Mason. Yes, I have it bent a little bit. I've skimmed through it some pages here and there. It takes a while to be able to read. It's like wine. It's very much an acquired taste and... Read it in small doses, I'd say three or four pages at a time, but it's very much heavy reading that says geography. It's very much heavy reading, and I'm sure later on down the road I will read more of it, but right now I'm not. Another book uh, commonly used during the one Room Schoolhouse era, around the time of McGuffey's being used. Ray's New Primary Arithmetic. Now, there are more levels of this book series. I just got this basic one on Amazon, I think, for like $7. See? McGuffey's Readers, Primer, Next Primer, First, Second, Third, Fourth, The Progressive Speller. I bought this on Amazon for about $7. Has this old-timey typewriter kind of text. Mary had eight cents and spent six cents for a thimble. How much had she left? Very old-timey language and grammar, but it still makes sense. You don't need to add any extra words in there. Mary has three hens, and each hen has six chickens. How many chickens are there in all? Topic, multiplication. Six times three is 18. Here's division. We have uh, how many melons at 10 cents each can you buy for 20 cents? Two. Review. How many are two times three minus four? The answer is two. In the same row, four times six minus three. That would be 21. Another word problem. Promiscuous questions. I believe it's a euphemism or a figurative way of saying intriguing, thought-provoking questions with too much info that you need to delete internally and you need to ignore the extra info. I'm 
not quite sure. It's very old-fashioned, very old-timey for the definition. Anna is six, and Janet is twice as old as Anna, makes her 12, and two years more, 14. How old is Janet? 14. How many years be both in both their ages? 14 plus 6 is 20. Now I get it. More review. Begin with 7 and add by 7s to 98. No, thank you. Ray's Arithmetic Series. Primary. Primary Arithmetic. Intellectual Arithmetic. Higher Arithmetic. The Primary Arithmetic. Reading, Writing, Understanding Numbers to 100. Intellectual Arithmetic. Understanding higher whole numbers, fractions, mixed numbers, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, computation of simple fractions. Practical arithmetic, Roman numbers, carrying addition, subtraction, borrowing, measurement, compound numbers, factors, decimals, percentage, ratio, proportion, advanced vocabulary, powers and roots, beginning geometry. Yes, my eyes are jumping. Higher arithmetic includes philosophical understanding, advanced study of common and decimal fractions, business math, ratio, geometry. Surprise, it doesn't include fractals. Maybe that wasn't a thing yet back then. Who knows? So, and then a final recommended reading. Now, I read this, I believe, in eighth grade, Forgotten Fire, and I read it again when I was in high school. I think both of them, both times I read this were on my own time, on my own dime, on my own library card. I think the first time I read this, it was more so for an assignment. I had to pick a nonfiction war story of some sort in eighth grade language arts. And in high school, I just reread this on my own time. I think in 10th grade when I was bored, and I had a teacher who was inadequate and using fourth grade fifth grade chapter books with pictures how unfortunate and then i was reading this and then one day he took it away from me and he said why are you reading this and i'm like the book you're teaching is too easy i'm in 10th grade not fourth grade but anyways i bought this book uh, i think a year ago and i got into it a little bit but I think I just remembered the book too well. And the next few pages, and the next few pages, and the next few pages, and the ending. As I got a little bit farther in, I realized. It's kind of like watching The Hunger Games. Once you watch the movie once, you don't need to watch it again. Certain movies, you just don't need to watch them again. Certain books, you don't need to read them again. Forgotten Fire was about the Armenian genocide. <sighs> Something that uh, a lot of society refuses to admit existed. That it just wasn't the Jewish Holocaust or the European Holocaust that existed, but in 1915, just before World War I, there was a mass genocide of... Turks and Armenians in Eastern Europe, Croatia, Bosnia, Yugoslavia. You get the picture. And then final recommended reading. I bought this about a year and a half ago when I got a job working at a KFC and I wanted to improve my Spanish and practiced here at home. I had watched a lot of YouTube videos. <coughs> Excuse me. It's my fourth video I've made today. Working my voice up is a total exercise. But anyways, I bought this Spanish grammar pamphlet when I worked at a KFC. And most people know that when you go into fast food, majority of your co-workers are going to be Latino. I thought it would help, but they didn't want me speaking Spanish to them. And they didn't want me to work there. And they wanted me to work the counter and deal with other customers. And there were a lot of Asian customers in that area. 
and they enjoyed or they were rude and didn't want me to have any progress or to have any good days and eventually I quit because they made the work environment very hostile and the manager didn't care so what can you do you quit sometimes certain jobs you realize it's not going to work out time to move on right now I don't have a job mass hysteria the virus I got laid off from a warehouse it wasn't a, an essential business anyways it's a overpriced furniture warehouse oh well so that's the recommended reading all of that back to blue my comforter thank you for listening stay tuned for another video